What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about making our own cloud in Proxmox. So if you're not familiar with Nextcloud, that's what we're going to be using today. And of course we're going to be using the Proxmox helper scripts to make everything super simple. So I'm just going to show you a quick demo of what we're going to be setting up today and then we're going to get right into the setup. So this is just a test instance of Nextcloud that I set up last night and it just comes with the default apps but you could set up anything else. So this would be the dashboard you get originally. Then you can see there's files. So you can share your files across your phone or multiple computers, however you want to do it. You can share your photos, you can save them from your phone. You can see this is actually one that I uploaded from the app. It's a viewer's comment from about a year ago that I found, I thought it was funny. Uh, but we can close that out. There's activities, so you can you know see a change log of everything you've done. You could also save contacts, so you have everything backed up on your own cloud versus you know your phone or whatever it is. You could set a calendar, there's notes, you could do a task list, and of course there's plenty more, you can come over and you could add more apps, but these are the default ones that are gonna come with this setup. So that's enough of this, let's get right into the setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over to the Proxmox helper scripts. So I've watched a few videos on setting up Nextcloud and there's a lot of steps to it, I won't lie, but the Proxmox helper scripts really make it simple. I mean, it's one script and you're done. So if you just come over to the script site, you can do next cloud, you can just start searching it. Now, there's a few different versions of it. I did the next cloud Pi. From what I see, they all appear to be the same options. They're just different like flavor OS's or some different base configurations, I guess. But I'm gonna go with the next cloud Pi one that's at the top. This seems to be the same across. I mean, they all seem to be the same one from what I could see. But I'm going to go with this one just because it worked and that's what I worked with yesterday. So all I'm going to do is, like I said, just copy the command. We're going to come back over to the main node. And then I'm just going to right click on my Proxmox node. I'm going to open up a shell. And then, oh, I lost my shell. And then I'm just going to come over here. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And then we're just going to paste in the command and we're going to hit enter. So you can see over here is going to prompt us if we want to make the LXC. So I'm just going to click yes. We're going to use the default settings and I'm just going to let this start going through. So it is going to make an LXC container that's going to run off your Proxmox server. It's possible you can run this in a VM if you want, but these helper scripts are going to run, make it as a LXC container, which is fine. There's no big difference to it. So we'll just come back over to our Proxmox. Now this does take maybe about five minutes or so. So don't be afraid of, you know, it's taking some time. I'm going to let this run out and then we'll be back when it's all done. So like I said, the script does take a little bit of time to do the installs, and you can actually see that when they were writing it out, it gives you a status of what's being installed as it goes, and it actually says patience. So don't worry, it, like I said, it does take a few minutes, so don't worry if you know it takes some time. Just let the script do its job and keep installing, and then once it's all done, we can keep going with the install. So like I said, we'll be right back when we're ready to keep going. Okay, and a couple of minutes later, it's all done, and you can see it gives you a status message saying that it's all set up, and you should be able to reach it with the following IP, so we're just going to copy this out, and we're just going to click copy, and then we're going to come back over here, and I'm all done with this, so I'm just going to paste it in here, and you can see we're going to get the security warning, which is fine, we're going to accept the risk and continue, now this is important over here, you're going to want to take a note of this stuff, because this is how we're going to access it the first time, so it makes two user accounts. Um, so there's this user account and then this would be the user account we're actually gonna log in with. So I'm just gonna copy both of these so I have them. And I'm just gonna put these in a notepad for now. We're only gonna need these really once, which is fine. And we'll be done with that afterwards. So we're, we're gonna make another account, like I said, once we get in, so it, it'll be all right. So we're going to click activate. Now this is going to take another minute or so. And once it's all done activating and setting up the actual next cloud so we can get in, we'll be all set. I'll show you how to log in and then we can start working with our next cloud. So in the meantime, while that works, I figured I'll just talk a little bit about next cloud. So if you're somebody who uses like Google photos or maybe use like AWS or Amazon photos, or maybe you share notes with like a Google doc or something like that, however you do it, you know, Whatever kind of cloud services you're using to maybe save or share your pictures, your notes, your documents, however you do it, your videos, um, 
it's all stuff you could do through Nextcloud. So you could self-host your own instance of Nextcloud, and you could host your own video calls. You could host a photo server, so you could save all your pictures off your phone straight to your Nextcloud instance, and it's it's saved on your hard drive and your computer. So the big thing with this is like iCloud storage is pretty pricey. I ended up snagging a deal, so I think I pay three dollars a month for fifty gigs, which really isn't great, but to have a straight backup of my phone, it's what I do. Um, but you could do this for free outside of, you know, you already have your hardware running for your home lab. So this is something you could host. You could back up all your pictures, your contacts, your calendar, all your stuff. And you could do it straight out of your phone to your own server that you have full access over and not somebody else. So it's just another way to, you know, bring more of your services back into your household or your home lab, wherever you host it, and have full control of everything that goes on. So it's just something different that's going on that you could do. And pretty much that's what Nextcloud is going to make. It's going to make it so you don't have to rely on those cloud services from the big companies anymore. So you can see over here that the security warning came back, which is fine. So we're actually just going to take the port out at the end. And you can see over here it wants us to log in. So I'm just going to log in with that. We're going to grab the second password that we had copied over into that notepad. And I'm going to paste that in. I want to not save it because I don't need it. And here we are in our next cloud. So this is just showing us the basics of a next cloud since it's our first time logging in. So it gives you some basic info. It's available that you can install apps for it on Android or iOS. I was actually messing with the app last night on my iPhone. And it's pretty nice because you could just take your picture straight from your phone and upload it right to your next cloud. Over here, you can see there's more apps and other stuff to go. We'll cover a little bit of this in the, later on. And then other than that, there's just another intro and then whatever. So nothing really too crazy. We're just going to click get started. And here we are at our dashboard. So the one thing that I do want to do is come back over to Proxmox. And by default, the hard drive that is set isn't really that large. So we're probably going to want to expand that so it has a larger hard drive. So to do this, we're going to come over to the console. I'm going to shut down the container. It's going to power it off. We're going to come over to resources and we're just going to come over here to this root disk. So this is the only disk that is on here and we're going to increase the storage. So I'm just going to resize this. You could do it as much as you want. I'm just going to give it 50 more gigs, but if you're going to actually be using your next cloud, this for me is just my test. If you're going to be using your next cloud to, you know, you save your pictures, your contacts, everything else on it, you're probably going to want to give it more space. I'm just working with what I have on this machine and this is for this demo. So I'm just going to click resize disc. You can see that Proxmox does the work and I'm just going to give it a minute because it looks like the container is still hung up. So we're just going to give this a second. Once it's done, it's going to power cycle. We do need to power cycle the machine so it applies it. So the one thing you could see about adding the disk is I added 50 gigs. So it just adds on to the additional eight that was already there. So just keep that in mind if you're, you know, you're trying to get like even numbers or whatever you might be trying to do. But I just added 50 gigs. So it's just over there. So it looks like the machine finally powered off. So I'm just going to reboot this and then we'll be right back. So just so it has more storage. So it's just one of those things you got to do. So uh, your next cloud will actually have enough storage to work with. Okay, so I rebooted the machine or the container. So I'm just going to do LSBLK tech A. And over here we can see all the shares that are on the machine. For some reason, it shows it that it has 447 gigs. I believe this is because the containers are just sharing off the actual machine's kernel. So that is why it shows that it has that much storage because my actual LVM is, I think, a 500 gig hard drive. So that is most likely why when you do LSBLK, because it's an LXC container, it's still going to show you that much space. But just remember that if you come over to resources, it really only has whatever you assigned it over here on this drive. So just keep that in mind. One other thing you want to do is you're going to change the password to the root account on the console so it's secure, so nobody can just SSH in. Because right now there's no password set. So we're going to do PASSWD. And you can set a password right here. And now you can see over here, I just updated my password really quick. So now we can go back over to our next cloud. I'm just going to refresh this. And you can see I'm logged in. The first thing we want to do is we're going to make a new account for ourselves. So all I did was come over here to the top corner and just click users. We're going to click new account and we're just going to give ourselves our name. So I'm just going to put my name in, my display name, 
we're going to do a password. We'll put in an email address. Now over here we have a group, so I don't have any groups set yet, so I'm just going to make myself an admin so I also have access to do everything. Other than that, there's a quota. I guess you can limit how much traffic people can go in and out of your Nextcloud server. I'm going to leave this default because I don't really care about a limit right now. And then over here, I guess if they're, if you like really break your Nextcloud into teams or groups or whatever, you can have managers for certain teams and you can set a manager for the account. I don't need this right now, so I'm just going to leave that blank. We're going to click add new user. I'm going to do not now. And then as always, I go in to test my account and make sure it works. So I'm just going to come over here and log back in. And we'll click not now because I don't want Firefox to save it. And it looks like we're good. And here's the intro again because it's the first time logging in. So I'm just going to close that out. And you see over here we have our next cloud. So now we're hosting our own cloud off our Proxmox server. Like I was showing you before, we have all of our default apps. So if you want to use files, photos, any of that stuff, you can do it in here. There are Nextcloud apps, like I was saying, for Android and Apple. So you can go on there and you could actually use it to transfer your photos or you can do notes or whatever you want to do off your phone. You could put it right into your Nextcloud online. If we come back into the top corner, there's apps. Now over here in apps, you could find some different add-ons to put into your Nextcloud. So maybe if you want to do like a, a GPS tracker or whatever you might want to do, you can scroll through here. They have a discover page and they have a whole bunch of featured apps. So you could take a look. So like here's photo stuff. There's a PDF viewer and they have categories as well. So like there's a few games, there's multimedia stuff. So you can really take a look in here and you can find what you're probably going to want to add on by default. You have the simple stuff, but then there's additional stuff that you could add on through here. Like you could do brute force protection through security. There's monitoring so you can keep a track on everything. There's integrations. I saw one, there's like a um, home assistant add-on so you can have it go through with home assistant, I believe. So you can really spend some time figuring out some apps and really tune this out to how you want to use it. But this is just our simple cloud. It's our own next cloud instance that we can sit here and do everything and self host our own cloud off our Proxmox server. So we can get away from doing all of those online subscriptions and paying all those fees for somebody else to hold all of our data for us. So that was how we set up Nextcloud on a Proxmox. Super simple using the Proxmox helper scripts. Maybe takes about eight minutes to do the install or so. It takes more time just to get the install all done on the server and then the setup's pretty easy after that. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, maybe you could drop a like, a comment, and subscribe. It just really helps the channel out. I'll have all the links to my gear in my home lab below. And if you want to check any of that stuff out, maybe get the same gear that I use. I have a Discord server if you guys want to join up the server. I'll have a link below as well. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.